We're given a square root function, g, and told to find the inverse of g, and then some domain and range stuff. So at first, this might look like something we've done before. right? We've certainly been doing a lot of inverses and domains and ranges. But there is a trick when you're dealing with square root functions called restricting the domain. Um, basically, there's an opportunity for error if we're not careful here. I think the first part is pretty straightforward, finding the inverse. So we'll do that now. y equals the square root of 8x minus 5 plus 2. Right? I changed g of x to y. Now I switch the x's and the y's everywhere I see them, which is not that many places. And now I'm going to start solving for y. So first I pull the 2 off like that, and I get 8y plus uh, minus 5. I get 8y minus 5 on the right side. And now we're going to keep on peeling things off of y until I get y by itself. So x minus 2 squared plus 5, that's going to give me 8y. So I'll just go ahead and divide everything by 8, and that gives me y. Okay, so that is your inverse, which we would put right there. And whatever square root function you have, it's going to go something similar to what I just drew here. Now, when it comes to domain and range, let me just draw an explanation for why this is going to be a little weird. If you have a square root function, and I don't know what this thing's going to look like. It's going to be, um, I don't know, over here somewhere. Okay, there we go. I drew a square root function. Pretend it's that, and you try taking the reciprocal, uh, not the reciprocal, the inverse of this thing, right? Remember what an inverse is. You're going to flip it around this y equals x line. So it's actually going to look more like this. Here's your inverse function. And what does that remind you of? You should be thinking, oh, that's a parabola of some kind. Well, yes, and that matches the equation we just got, right? The x minus 2 squared thing. That's a parabola equation. Here's the problem, though. If you take a closer look, you'll see that we only have half a parabola here. Here's the other half, which I'm going to plot in red. This is the other half of a parabola, which is described by this equation right here. That equation describes a full parabola, not just half a parabola. And yet, we don't have a full parabola. We have half a parabola. Because that's what happens when you flip uh, the function over the line y equals x. So we have to find some way of saying this. This is correct, the one I just circled in red. The full parabola is not correct. So that's going to require us to restrict the domain. And that is where most of the errors happen in these sorts of problems. We have to restrict the domain. So here's your method. You're going to find domain and range of g of x first. This is how we're going to avoid errors. Once you find the domain and range of g, then you flip them, and that's the range and domain of your inverse. Okay, so let's go through a quick procedure of how to do that. Uh, let me go get my function again. What was it? Uh, 8x minus 5 plus 2. Okay, so here's... That's, that's f of x. I keep writing f of x. Here's g of x. Okay, it's the square root of 8x minus 5 plus 2. And now I'm going to find the domain, and then I'll find the range. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. The domain comes from the fact that you get a restriction in that you can't square root a negative. Okay, so 8x minus 5 can't be negative. The way we say that is greater than or equal to 0, which means 8x is greater than or equal to 5, which means x is greater than or equal to 5 over 8. Okay, so the domain is going to be this. It's going to go from 5 eighths to infinity. Okay, that's the domain of G. Now about the range. Oh, a unit circle. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to have to, uh, uh, I'm going to, have to work around that. Here, you are going to move. Let's bring this up here. Okay, great. So domain is done. Let's find the range. The way you find the range of a square root function is you think in terms of the minimum and maximum values you can have. First, we talk about the minimum y values. What is the smallest this thing can be? Okay, well, it's going to be the square root of 0 plus 2. That's the minimum you can get. You can't get something that's less than a square root of 0. You can't get a negative number, for example. So what that means is your minimum y value is 2. And how about the maximum y value? Maximum y. What is that? Well, the maximum value is really big. 
It's like infinity plus two. And what's that going to be equal to? Well, it's basically infinity. So there's your min and max values. And if you turn that into range, here's what you get. You get, um, well, it goes from two to infinity. Now, the only time this is going to get you into trouble trying this way of thinking is when you have a negative square root. Okay, when you have a negative square root, like a negative sign right there, then you've got negative infinity to deal with. Okay, instead of a positive infinity. To, so watch out for that. If you have a negative sign in front of the square root, you have to keep track of that thing. Uh, but in this case, it was just a positive square root, so our range goes 2 to infinity. Okay, so I'm going to take those two values, and I'm going to put those in the appropriate places up here. This one was the domain, 5 eighths to infinity. And the range, make sure you get it in the right spot, was y equals 2 to y equals infinity. And now what you do is you switch those around as appropriate. The domain of g becomes the range of g inverse, and the range of g becomes the domain of g inverse. And that gets us around the whole problem of half a parabola versus a whole parabola.